Getting top eight was incredible. Knowing that you have to play Astralis in the first game, not so much, but uh, the overall feeling was still good. Knowing that we usually tend to play well against Astralis, and also if you want to win the tournament, you have to beat the best team, so there's no shortcuts. Uh, expectations were, I would say, set high. I definitely, everybody definitely believed we could beat uh, Astralis. We did the necessary preparations as well, so it's looking good. I think all the teams here at the Major, not only top 8, but top 16, I think all are really good. Even further back, uh, top 24, all teams are really good. We get the toughest one in the first game. We have played a good against Astralis before. It is not impossible to beat them, but uh, they are the best team in the world, so there's no doubt about the fact that we had a difficult opponent the first game. It also the, the mic quality will be a little bit more, so that's because these are helicopter heads. So that means that this will never pick up any passes. Okay, which is good. Um, you're still supposed to use in ears. Um, you can still use your own sound card. Um, I think we just want you to join team speak, communicate to each other, play, play on that much work. Can I keep the inners? No. Um, yeah? <laughs> you thief? They're pretty okay. Yeah. You're a thief? Thief. At least I asked. <laughs> oh, you're a kind thief. <laughs> it's easy when you play against a good team that you focus on their weaknesses and you forget about your own gameplay. Uh, what we tried to do was to focus on ourselves going into the game against Astralis. I think a lot of people saw as well is that we actually banned Nuke this time and uh, played us too, which we knew they would pick and we prepared uh, pretty much the whole week we had uh, after managing to get top 8, we used the whole week to uh, prepare us too, uh, which was going to be our triumph card uh, against them, uh, uh, which I think we did fairly good, but that was the plan we had uh, against them. I hope you will take a translator, but we will die, but it's okay. Bro, good work today. See you on Monday. The feeling I had when we left the hotel, ready to go to the venue, was excitement. I know the crowd is going to be amazing here in Spodek, and boy, did they not disappoint. But I was feeling overall excitement, uh, anxiousness, uh, just eager to be playing again because it's been a whole week since we played, and I was just hungry as hell. You could feel the tension, uh, you could feel it on the way to the arena, also. It was something. I think everyone wanted to win so much. Entering the arena was insane. Um, the, just walking in and hearing the crowd was really amazing. And uh, watching everyone cheer like it was unforgettable for sure. Once we entered the stage in Spodek Arena, they blew my mind off. It was not even near the expectations or what I have had gone through in my head. I was blown away by the amount of support and love we had from the crowd and just the energy in the arena was one of the best feelings I've ever had, ever. Det är ju som att vinner man tempot. Astralis är så mycket.
Let us have our second quarter final to find out who is going to face MIBR in that semi tomorrow. So please welcome to the stage. We've heard the chants already, and that is NIB! It's Dupree that's going to claim the first kill of this matchup. Glaive holds the line with two one taps. And that's the bomb going down with it. He's going to be able to pick up the third. And Astralis off with a bang. He's got two to open up that eight bomb site. But it's a tough angle. Glaive's not looking. Big time frag for Rez. And A is available. He's going to come down to the clutch Meister himself. Mr. Zipnitz, what can he get done? He's already put down one frag, 25 seconds to go, but Forrest counteracts with one of his own. It's all down to the clutch, he's picked up another one, and now it's up to Rez to try and clutch this one-on-one. -on -one. The Swede against the Dane. Zipnik's gonna be coming around the corner, finds him with his pants down around his ankles, but unable to get the kill the first time. Asking, but gets it on the second! When we started off, uh, we had an idea of, of the pistol round we wanted to play. Looking back now on the demo, we could uh, noticed that Astralis had a uh, stack towards that B bomb site. When we didn't get that pistol round, we had a few opportunities within the f first five, six rounds where we could have won a round and uh, potentially we could have got our economy up and their economy could have been weakened. Uh, the match could have been different on Mirage. We didn't win those uh, early rounds. I think that set the tone for the game. Uh, after six, seven rounds, they had full buy. They had the weapons, the utility. I think maybe we had two full buys. Uh, the rest of the buys we had was not 100%. They've had this connector position a couple times and they haven't really been, been able to make anything come from it because look how, how aggressive Astralis is retaking it. They know you're there. They're not going to let you sit and wait. Legro with another kill and he's the only one producing for NIP matches with another quad kill in the round. When we were down 15-0 against Astralis, even though it was tough, uh, we just felt like, let's have some fun uh, until the second map and just uh, fix up the score, make it, make it closer, just have some fun uh, and laugh it off afterwards, pretty much. Rez, he's playing this one so slowly. He is waiting for as many terrorists to push past him as possible, but in doing so, he's baiting the rest of his teammates. Can he feasibly stop this from getting done? Oh, he's picked up two, looking for a third, lands it onto the bench as well. Can't get the fourth, as Mitch just does, but there's Forrest. I thought Rez had baited too hard, but he pulls it back. <laughs> On this two, which was a really close game, but I think what really came down to it was, I would say, individual plays from uh, Astralis, which pretty much closed it out for them, because I think we had solid playstyle on T. Reaping kills left and right in the first map is maybe going to pick up two in this. Forrest says no. Slaps him down. Going to be tested again. Flashbang has cleared. Forrest comes out. That's what Nip are looking for. They need Forrest to shine. Bomb's been dropped pre-fire. Not quite enough to claim Glaive, but Forrest, three separate jewels going his way. And Nip finally has something to cheer about. A gap in the smokes, so we can look to try and pounce, but elsewhere, Nip are overrunning the site. They're looking great to hold on, but Glaive is going to come up with one. He was looking good for a second. Rez, long range fight with USP is never ideal, but he's somehow going to come ahead alongside Dennis. And it's looking great for Nip now, and Dennis has put the final nail on the coffin. What ended up costing us the game was Zipix stepping up big time. Uh, I think it was the two last rounds where he got seven kills uh, in two rounds and he just shut us down. I think that kind of play is something that a few pro players will do. He made some nice moves that shut us down. Uh, I think that was a bit unlucky for us, but we learned something uh, from uh, those plays as well. But that was the difference for sure. Zipnix with the all Taylor made. He's going to be getting three with a spray. Single-handedly stops the push. 
has snagged this round away from NIP in such an integral moment. And to make matters worse, it's a clean sweep round. We touched on it. Zipnix knew exactly what was coming, and he downloaded NIP. Read the play the whole way, and he had the perfect moment. There's a lot of things we can learn from. Uh, a lot of details we can work on, but uh, there's also a lot of good things we can uh, take with us from this tournament. One of the good things is that we're back to being top eight legends. Next time we play a major, we won't have to play for three weeks to get into a final. Now it's two weeks. Another good thing also is that even though we know that we can lose first map a lot, we can be down 11-4 on the second map and still put up a good fight. That's at least two of the good things that we can keep with us going forward, knowing that even though the odds are against us, even though we're down a lot, we can still manage uh, to come back. And there's a lot of other good things also, uh, but I'd name those two things that are good and uh, the things we need to work on, uh, I will keep for myself. Jag förstår inte hur det kan vara så problematiskt allting. Du kan bara kasta mig och göra en intervju där, en intervju där. Men det är tydligen svårt. Två människor ska fungera, fundera ut hur man gör ett schema och hur man ska kasta dit och det. Det är som det är liksom. Det är som det är. Since we have had a long, long period right now, I think they, they have had maybe seven or eight days rest in total. They sent us to, to be quick, so we are doing our best. Yeah, yeah but it's like, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's not your fault. I'll say anything here, we don't have a black yeah, sure. I think now is a good time for them to get some rest, to be with the families, their friends, uh, to mentally reset. We have a lot of events, so the players uh, including me myself also, we won't have a lot of time with our families. So we will have a busy schedule, uh, I think three or four tournaments on, in a row. So right now, just some time off and then back on track.